Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of I'm Only Sleeping that they did in April and May of 1966. Paul used to go over to John's house to wake him up for writing sessions, and that's where John got the idea for the song. John Lennon was very, very fond of sleeping, and back in 1966, he said, I'm physically lazy. I don't mind writing or reading or watching or speaking, but sex is the only physical thing I can be bothered with anymore. The song has been misconstrued to be about drugs, but Paul says, It was a nice idea. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not being lazy. I'm only sleeping. I'm yawning. I'm meditating. I'm having a lay-in. The luxury of all of that was what it was about. So on April 27th, they're at EMI Studio 3, and they begin rehearsals for the song at 11.30 p.m. And the initial lineup is John on acoustic, Ringo on drums, and Paul playing vibraphone. In concert pitch, they're playing an E minor. Well, they drop the vibraphone idea pretty fast, and then they go to uh, John on acoustic, Paul on bass, George on electric, playing in a style that ends up on none of the recordings, and Ringo on tambourine. Well, they decide to tune the guitars down to E flat minor, Play the song a little faster with John and George on acoustic, uh, Paul on bass and Ringo on drums. And they do 11 takes like that, and take 11 is the keeper. Back in the studio on April 29th, um, they slow the tape down for John to do his lead vocals, and then when they speed it back up to the key of E flat minor, that's how you get the kind of ethereal sound that John has on his vocal. And John, Paul, and George do their background vocals uh, at the proper speed of E flat minor. Now, on May 5th, George decides to do some backward fills during the verses. And, you know, there are little bits of uh, backward guitar lines that they could mix in and out uh, when they were doing the final mixes. Um, it wasn't the first time that this had happened. Like, avant-garde composers like John Cage did this back in the, in the 50s, but the Beatles were the first to do this uh, in pop music. And in case you don't know, what they do is, you know, they take the whole reel of tape, turn it over, so you hear it sounding backwards, and George would play, you know, fills, and then when they would uh, put the tape for, uh, normally and play it forward, the guitar would sound backwards. And I'll explain that more when I get into guitar parts. Uh, May 6, George wants to do a guitar solo like that. So again, they spool the tape <laughs> upside down. George listens backwards and he spends all day doing two guitar parts to get a guitar solo that sounds backwards. And then Paul and George do the duet that would end up being the backwards uh, uh, ending on the fade out. And I'll show you all that frontwards and backwards. May 12, 1966 was the first time they did uh, some mono mixes, and there's different backward guitar parts on, on the different mono mixes. There's actually four mixes. There's two mono mixes and two stereo mixes. Uh, the first stereo mix was done on May, tw May 20th, and uh, that's the backwards part that I'll teach because it's the most commonly one that's heard. Um, they never played the song live. Uh, it was released June 66 in, the, in America on an album called Yesterday and Today, and in Britain on the Revolver album in uh, August of 66. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John and George are both playing their Gibson J160Es on I'm Only Sleeping. And uh, what you're going to need to do to get it to sound like the record is to tune your guitar down a half step. That means take your E and make it an E flat, your B, a B flat. Tune all of your strings down a half step. Because when you play a first position E minor, you want it to sound like an E flat minor. Okay, and that's how you'll do that. And then you can sound like the record. Now, to play a verse, you'll need these chords. You'll need an E minor, an A minor, G, a C, and we're getting a high G on that uh, with our pinky on that C chord. Uh, you'll need a B7. And an A minor seventh. Now what's paramount to get the feel of I'm only sleeping correctly is to play what I'm going to call swing eighths. Now when you think of eighth notes, if you take the first measure, there's, there's uh, something happening on the third beat. But if you were to play straight eighths, it would sound like this. Right? One, two, three, and four. But that's not what John's doing. 
What he's doing is he's playing a subdivision of triplets on the third beat. If you were to count triplets, you'd count one, two, three, ta ta, four. So John is playing on the first triplet and the last triplet of the third beat. So John plays. Right? One, two, three, ta, four. So it's not. It's. And that's very important throughout the entire song. Uh, there's only one instance where he plays straight eighth notes to get the feel of the song correctly. Okay, so uh, he begins on an E minor and he, he, strum, he, he strums the chord up and he also strums the second measure A minor up. And he, uh, the verse begins like this. Nice little triplet thing on the B7. Continuing. Throws a little A minor seventh in there. Before the first chorus. Now on the first chorus you'll need a couple more chords. You need a B minor. You'll need a C major seventh. And at the end of that C major 7, John puts his pinky, uh, his first finger down to get a C. Like that. So chorus sounds like this. Boom, boom, boom. Get that? All right, let me play that all with Ringo in time so you have it as a reference. Three, four. And that's uh, a verse and a chorus. Second verse, there's a few uh, variations in rhythm, and we start to hear some of typical John Lennon's when he picks up, uh, like going from the G to the B7, you can hear open three strings, and that happens. But what's really of note in verse two, <clears throat> excuse me, is that on the, uh, on the G to the C, uh, you know, the verse it goes G to C, and Paul usually plays something like that. But on that uh, first beat of the G, Paul makes a mistake. He, he plays a G sharp. He plays. And uh, I'll leave that in, in my sound alike because, well, they left it on the record. Okay, so, uh, you know, here, second verse, I'll play a little bit of it with the, with the open strings that, that start to happen. So verse two is like this. anticipates that C right before the ending. In charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com, which will make this uh, probably a lot clearer than I can show you now. Chorus 2. And then we get to the bridge. And on the bridge, you'll need some different chords. Uh, you'll need a D minor, sounds like this. An E. E7. That same A minor. And then there's a C on the bottom of it. You could either call it A minor over C, or C6, whatever you prefer. Uh, you'll need an F7. And then some kind of like, you know, basically power chords on the F and the E. 
So the first part of the bridge is like this. And then he, this is where he plays, the first time he plays straight eighth notes. When he gets into that measure uh, on the E, it's, it's, he goes. Straight eighths. And then he picks up the swing again. Which takes me to page three of my chart. All right, now during the solo, there's a couple of interesting things. The solo is basically the same chords, except when he gets to that C. So on the solo, um, Right here, he plays like a, a, a C up to the E string, then a C9. Well, I should say C add nine. And then C only to the uh, second string, back to the C9. So you hear, or, right? And then back into the chorus. Second bridge, uh, it's pretty much the same, except um, on those the, the low parts of the F, you know, he kind of he mutes it and plays along with Ringo, pretty much the same rhythm as Ringo plays. And then down there, um, he, I think because he anticipated so much with Ringo, he has to kind of catch up, and he plays a, he plays a figure like. Anticipates that C again. And then on the ending, let's see what's different on the ending. Nice extra accents on that A minor. Then he holds that C. Triplets on the A minor. Maybe for reference, I'll play you from verse four all the way out. It's this way, it should be more clear. So those are all the parts that John Lennon plays on I'm Only Sleeping. And George is playing pretty much the sim similar part, a similar part, but he's not doing all the accents. So George is just doing kind of a straight strumming, but also using that, um, that uh, triplet kind of thing. So George would be just more like. Like that. And unfortunately, you can barely hear him uh, on the record, but uh, that's what's happening. You can more feel George's part. So those are all the acoustic parts you need to play I'm Only Sleeping. George Harrison is playing his Fender Sonic Blue Stratocaster for these backward guitar parts. And the first time you hear him is on the second verse when John is singing, running everywhere. Uh, George's first line is. And then on measure uh, four, he plays. And just normal whole step bends, except when he bends this, uh, this A, he bends it up to, to the C. So here it is, uh, forward, more in time, how it will fit, and backwards. Next comes...
comes the backward guitar solos. And here's the notes he played slowly. And here it is in time and backwards. George added a second part to his solo, and here's the notes he played. Fun slide from an open B all the way up to the 13th fret. And here it is in time and backwards. And on the outro, George added some droning parts. The first one sounds like this. And backwards, it sounds... And George's second droning part sounds like this. And backwards sounds like this. Paul, on his Epiphone Casino, with a dirtier tone, added this to the outro. I'll play it slowly for you first. And here it is in tempo and backwards. The chart and tabs for all these parts are available for you to download at MikePacelli.com. This way you'll have them right in front of you. Well, I put it all together in a sound like so you can see how the parts fit together. So have a look at this.
There you have it. And as you just saw, a seemingly simple Beatles song has a lot of intricate parts. I suggest you learn each one, play along with my sound alike, and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com, and that's where all the charts and tabs are available for you to download. And I appreciate your consideration on that, because that's how you could help support my work. So until next time, have fun playing this great old song. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. Mm-hmm.